uh, doing these series of Take Care of Yourself with Meredith Morgan. I am her biggest fan now and her biggest follower on all of social media, which I'm sure you will all be after this uh, event. Uh, so let me introduce Meredith to you. Meredith is a 2003 Williston alumna who went on to attend UMass Dartmouth, where she played basketball for four years and softball for two. She went on to graduate school and attended the Parsons School of Design, where she studied fashion design. She's been working as a wardrobe stylist since graduating in 2011 and was signed with her first modeling and acting agent in 2016. She has since landed national TV commercials, small worlds in movies and TV shows and has modeled in a number of campaigns for different brands. After being signed and with some struggling struggle getting booked at her size, she discovered there was a huge void in the fashion world and all across mainstream media. And come to think of it, since she was a little girl, she didn't see anyone that looked like her. So her blog turned into an online body positive platform where she talks about all things curvy and mid-sized fashion and movement. She is on the quest of bridging the gap between straight and plus size women. The online space she has created is a space for women who feel underserved and underrepresented. She has organically grown her audience to thousands of women who Meredith has inspired to love and accept their bodies, build their self-confidence and care through their bodies through movement. And it feels like you're talking directly to me, Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so it is my pleasure to introduce, Mer introduce Meredith. I am going to put a spotlight on you, Meredith. All righty. All right. Hi, guys. Thank you all so, so, so much for coming. Um, Mom, hi. <laughs> Okay, so first up, I'm gonna just kind of walk you guys through what the session is gonna be about. Um, I'm gonna take you through a warm up and stretch. Um, and then I have a presentation that we're gonna talk about uh, fitness, why it's good, um, uh, nutrition, and then all the ways we can do some self care because right about now, I'm sure we could all use a little bit more of it. So I'm gonna just move my computer and start our warm up together. If you guys don't want to warm up, you can just watch me and put this in your back pocket for future use. Or you can join me on your yoga mat or your rug or wherever you may be at this time. So I'll go ahead and give you guys a couple seconds to set up your mats if you're at home. Um, so this warm up, um, I was going to just do a stretch, but a warm up is actually better to be warm while we stretch as opposed to just cold static stretching. So I created this warm up um, for people of all different ages, different sizes, different shapes, um, specifically with both of my parents in mind because I know my dad wants to start moving his body a little bit more. So this warm up will be great for somebody who isn't really um, a workout person. And so um, yeah, let's get started. So first we're gonna just start with some uh, uh, arm circles. You're gonna start with your right arm and just slowly go in a circular motion forward. We'll do this for a few seconds. And then go ahead and go backwards. You're probably hearing some cracking and creaking, that's okay, that's normal. All right, go ahead and switch to your left arm with forward circles. And backwards. All right, so we're gonna now do small arm circles with both of our arms at the same time in a forward motion. I'm gonna do this as long as it takes to get your arms going, get them a little bit warm, maybe a little bit tired, and backwards. Okay, next up is going to be a hip rotation. Um, you can also modify, so it doesn't have to be as wide as I'm gonna go. Modify would just be a little bit smaller, more advanced would be a wider hip rotation. Putting your hands on your hips is a good way to balance. All 
And let's switch legs to our left leg. And we can switch directions. All right. Next, we're going to do an alternating toe touch. And your stance is gonna be a little bit wider than hip width. And you're gonna start with your arms out and you're gonna take your right hand and touch it to your left foot, like so. Modified version would be to bend your legs a little bit and just go down to your knee and come up. So this is modified. This would be for advanced. And this is not a race. So take your time. And this is really sort of warming up our abdominal muscles uh, as well. All right, and last one. Okay, now we're gonna do an alternating side lunge. So again, um, a wide stance and we're gonna start very high in our side lunges. So just ever so slowly moving from side to side. And when you feel like you can go a little bit deeper, go ahead and go a little bit deeper. Couple more here. We should all feel pretty warm at this point. We have a couple more exercises for our warm up until we get into our stretch. All right, you guys can meet me on the back of your mat. So I'm gonna just adjust my screen here. And we are gonna do something that's called a walkout. Okay, so I'll show you the modified version in one second, but the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go down, touch your toes, and walk out into a plank position. And then you're gonna walk back in. You won't be able to see me on the screen, but then you're gonna reach up to the, uh, up to the sky. Modified version would just be coming down to a squat like this, walking out like this to a plank, you can drop your knees for another modified version and then walk back in, legs bent, stand up to the sky, reach up. So let's go ahead, you guys can join in, walk out to a plank, walk back in and reach up. We'll do this a few more times. And reach up. This is great because this will get our entire body warm. Let's move here. And last one. Okay, next move we're gonna do is called a dead bug. <laughs> so we're gonna lay on our backs. We're gonna put our legs into a tabletop position. Rest your head on the ground. Put both hands up into the air. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your left leg and your right arm and you're gonna drop them at the same time. And you're gonna bring them back into center. Go ahead and join me now. This is really great work for your abdominals. A few more. Last one. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin our stretch. Um, 
if you do have a yoga strap or you can grab a kitchen towel or a tie of some sort or a bathrobe tie, uh, if you have that handy, go ahead and grab that. You may not need it, but for somebody who has tight hamstrings, I do. So first we're gonna start out by sitting cross-legged and we're gonna just do a simple side stretch. So you're gonna place your right arm next to your side and your left arm into the sky and you're just gonna tip from side to side. And reach. This feels so good. Okay, last two. And you guys can go ahead and meet me on your hands and knees. We're gonna do a little bit of a cat cow. So if you guys are familiar with yoga at all, you know this move, but essentially you're gonna be in a tabletop position and you're going to start by doing a cat move. Um, so you're going to sort of lift up from the center and your abdominals, and then you're gonna go into a cat, um, I'm sorry, cow pose. So you're gonna arch your back, stick your butt up into the air, look up, and then back into cat. This is really important to make sure that you guys are breathing while you're doing this. And this is a slow movement. And last one. Next, we're gonna do, we're gonna stay down, actually, <laughs> tabletop, and we're gonna do thread the needle. So you're gonna take your right arm and you're gonna thread it underneath your left arm and you're gonna rest your head on the floor, your mat, and you're gonna come up on your left fingertips and you're just gonna sort of relax in this position. Your butt is being stuck up into the air. And go ahead and switch sides. You're gonna take your left hand, thread it under your right. Go ahead and rest your head on the ground and come up on those fingertips and press that booty into the air. All right, the next stretch we're going to do is we're going to do a deep lunge. So you're gonna bring your left leg up, I'm sorry, your right leg up, and you're going to sort of thrust your hips forward, not sticking out your butt, but keeping your pelvis forward. And you guys can go as deep as you want, or modified, just go as deep as you can, as deep as you feel comfortable with. And go ahead and switch legs. Again, keeping in mind we're tilting our, we're not tilting our pelvis back, we're tilting up forward. And from here, we're going to go into pigeon. So I'm gonna show you what pigeon is and then I'll show you the modified version for those of you who may not feel comfortable doing it. So we're gonna just take our left foot and put it across our bodies like so. We're gonna come down, we're keeping that back leg straight. This would be um, acceptable. And then if you wanted to do advanced, you can come down onto your forearms or even further with your arms out and your head on the ground. So if you feel comfortable doing that, go ahead and get into pigeon. For those of you who want the modified version, we're gonna just do a figure four. So you're gonna sit on the ground, put one leg up, and you're gonna cross your left leg, and then you're gonna lift your right leg, and you're gonna just pull forward. So this is the figure four. This is doing 
the same sort of stretch as the pigeon is. It's just in a less, I guess, precarious position. So this is one of my all-time favorite stretches. And go ahead and switch. So you're going to put your right leg forward, left leg back. For those of you on your back, just swap legs. All right, let's go ahead and get into a butterfly. And um, modified version would just be, you know, press your legs down on its own. For advanced, you can go ahead and use those elbows to get a deeper stretch. We'll go ahead and hold this for a few seconds. And the next stretch, um, we may utilize the yoga strap or a bathrobe uh, strap or a tie of some sort. Um, so have that handy. Next one. All right, so the next one is gonna be a hamstring stretch. My hamstrings are constantly tight. So if you cannot touch your toe, go ahead and use your strap and place it around your foot and just pull ever so slightly. And go ahead and switch sides. All right, we're gonna stand up and we're gonna do some arm stretches and then we'll get into the presentation. All right, so the first stretch is gonna be a cross arm stretch. So we can go ahead and just crisscross a few times. And then on the next one, go ahead and grab whatever arm is in front of you and just pull with the opposite arm. And go ahead and switch sides. And let's go ahead and do a tricep stretch. So take one arm and grab the elbow and put it down your back like so. And switch to the other side. And then if you want to grab your, uh, um, your little tie, go ahead and do that now. Um, you may not need it, but I'll, I'll do the modified version first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the rope or the tie from behind us and we're gonna go ahead and lift up. If you don't need the rope or the tie, go ahead and just grab your arms behind your back and do the same thing. And uh, go, go ahead and go as far as you feel comfortable. If you do not feel comfortable tipping over like this, you can just um, hold your arms behind your back and just bring them up ever so slightly. All right. That completes our warm of the workout. So I'm gonna just move you guys back to my desk. Get into the presentation. Oh, I feel nice and warm. Sweating a little bit. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We are going to share my screen. All right, so let's just get right into it. Um, 
So Tammy was so kind and introduced me, but essentially um, the reason why my sort of platform came to exist was because I um, felt like there was a huge void in the influencer uh, social media world. And not only that, in my professional career as well, I'm a size eight and 10 and found it to be extremely difficult to get booked at my size. Um, I'll give you one small example of what happened. One, one example of what happened to me. Um, I got booked off of my headshot for a shoot in the Hamptons and um, they ended up booking me, sending me the time, call time, um, what I needed to bring for wardrobe, uh, the address and all of this good stuff. And then they said, oh, by the way, can you send us your sizes? And I sent them my sizes and I got canceled from the shoot. So this is one of the reasons why I decided to sort of create a space um, for women in particular um, to help them feel represented, right? Because there are thousands, probably millions of women out there who do not see themselves in mainstream media at all um, on billboards and advertisements, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have come a long way in our plus size world, which is amazing, but there are still, you know, many things that need to be done for everybody to feel included and represented. So the point of my online community is to help inspire women to love the skin they're in, build their confidence and take care of their bodies, no matter what they look like through movement and fitness. So this is just gonna walk you through what I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, let me just close this. And okay, so we're gonna talk about fitness. We're gonna talk about the benefits of fitness. We're gonna, I'm gonna share my routine with you guys and the things that I like to do to exercise. And then we're gonna talk about workout clothing, which you're probably wondering why, but I'll tell you. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about is nutrition. We're gonna talk about um, my health and my disease that I have actually, um, that deters me, well, actually, um, doesn't allow me to eat specific foods. Then we're gonna talk about learning about food and then we're gonna talk about, you know, I'm gonna give you some examples of some of the things that I eat. And then we're gonna talk about self-care. We're gonna talk about self-care practices and then we're gonna go over some words of affirmation um, which will be great to start out 2021 with. So let's get into it. All right, so the benefits of fitness. So this is a very, fitness is a very powerful tool and a tool that I'm not sure as many people are utilizing as we should. So um, first it helps fight a number of things that helps fight depression, anxiety, and chronic anxiety, disease, fear, uncertainty, risk, and judgment. And essentially fitness is therapy for these types of things. Um, and I'm hoping that if people go to the doctor with these sort of um, diseases or um, things of that nature, I'm hoping that doctors are telling people to move their bodies because this is such a great way to help fight those things. Um, the other benefits of fitness are it creates energy and fuel. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, it just takes so much out of you. And, you know, it, it makes me tired. And I, 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 that's not true. It actually fuels us. It creates energy for us. So no matter how tired we're feeling at the moment, or maybe we're struggling sort of getting into our workout or starting, I just want to reiterate that it actually creates energy for us. Um, the next thing is it makes us physically strong, which we all I'm sure would love to be stronger. Um, it helps change the way our brain processes all the things that it helps fight. So fear, anxiety, depression. Um, it makes us more productive and creative that improves our mood. So if you guys are ever feeling down or sad or anxious or angry, I always suggest people move their body and it will help. Um, it improves our cognitive functions like memory, speech, thought, decision-making, problem solving, all of that good stuff. Um, it makes our organs and muscles work effectively, which is super important. And if I can see the bottom here, um, 
it increases our life expectancy. And I'll give you a little example of that. My grandmother is turning 101 years old this year in August. Um, and I will never forget her and my grandfather would travel to all over the country. Um, and they would have a separate suitcase where they would bring um, their coffee canisters full of whatever they filled them with, I don't remember, um, to create weights for them. Um, and they would pack that and a shower curtain in this particular luggage, this carry-on luggage, and they would bring that piece of luggage wherever they went. And they would lay down a shower curtain on the ground in whatever hotel room that they were at, and they would exercise. And if that has, if that says anything, she's about to be 101 and she exercised pretty much every day of her entire life. So it definitely increases life expectancy, which is great. We all want to live, well, <laughs> these days it's tough to think that, but we all want to live a really long time. Um, it improves our overall health, health and, it, and it helps us sleep better. So what do I do to work out? So I work out anywhere between three and six times a week and I give myself a minimum and a maximum. So I give myself minimums 20 minutes. I'm going to work out and the max will be an hour or so. And the reason why I want to sort of give you that parameter that I give myself is because I think a lot of the times we um, want to work out, I think it can be really daunting in the sense of, oh, you know, I, I have to work out for two hours or if an hour feels too long, sometimes an hour can be daunting. So I give myself 20 minutes and just as, lo as long as I move my body for 20 minutes, I've done, you know, the best thing for my body that day. Um, and sometimes I work out longer depending on, you know, my energy level, et cetera. So I say all that to say, give yourself attainable parameters so it won't deter you from wanting to work out. Um, I do an array of different things on a weekly basis. Um, I run two to three miles. Um, also, going back to what I just said, I used to only run three miles or more and that was a little bit daunting. So I brought it down to two and it feels like, oh, well, I can just do two and it won't, and I feel accomplished and it doesn't feel daunting and I get excited to do it. Um, I bike anywhere from five to 10 miles or more. Um, I love doing yoga. Sometimes I lift weights. Um, I do hit classes, which is high in interval um, intensity, intensity interval training, uh, which is really great speed walking 30 minutes. I always tell my parents, you know, you've got to pick up the pace, <laughs> you know, leisurely walking with a dog is hard because the dog wants to stop. But, um, I try to, you know, encourage them to get a good sweat, right? Walking is a great form of exercise, just as long as we're doing it fast enough to build up our heart rate and to get a little bit of sweat in. Um, I jump rope, I play basketball or golf. These are some of the things that I love doing. Um, I get excited to do them and one major point about working out and moving our bodies is finding joy in the movements that we do. Um, because that is so important. It will motivate us to actually work out and it won't deter us from not working out if we hate doing whatever it is that we are doing. Um, other ideas can be dancing, Pilates, kickboxing, boxing, swimming. I wish I had a pool because I would be doing laps every day. Uh, hiking is a great of uh, exercise, skiing, kayaking. Kayaking is great uh, specifically for your upper body and your abdominal muscles, martial arts, and rollerblading. All right. Okay. So I don't know. I, I think the chat should be open for you guys, but why don't you go ahead and ans answer this question? How many of us don't prioritize our workout clothing? So go ahead and drop a little smiley face or something in the chat box to let us know if you don't prioritize your workout clothing. And I can guarantee you most of us don't, but here's why we should. It is one of the, the biggest, I just love helping people think about this because all of these things are so beneficial to our health. So um, here's why we should. Clothing dictates how we feel. Our outward appearance affects the way we feel about ourselves. So how often do you guys put an effort towards what you're going to be wearing on any given day? Probably spend a decent amount of time thinking about it or putting energy into it, shopping for that type of stuff. Um, it immediately uh, dictates how we feel. 
will be more inclined to move our bodies if we're excited about what's on our bodies. So uh, I'll tell you firsthand, I love getting new workout clothing and fashionable workout clothing. And it definitely makes me more inclined to want to work out. It helps boost our confidence, um, has the possibility to change the way we think about fitness, which is super important. Um, what we wear has a direct correlation to how we perform. And I'll give you an example. So if you have, I don't know, maybe you're in finance and you work on Wall Street and you show up in sweatpants and you're kind of just bumming around in sweatpants, um, your performance that day is going to be different when you show up in a three-piece suit. Um, that's just how it works. It really, our, our, what we have on our bodies and what we wear, it really um, dictates how we perform. Uh, wearing clothing that you like while working out is super empowering. It gives us an extra, you know, piece of motivation and it boosts our self-esteem. And I will always be a firm believer of that, of this is when you look good, you feel good. So here are a couple resources that um, I will give you. And I know that Tammy is going to send this uh, deck out to all of you afterwards. You can refer back to it, but I do create my own workouts. Um, and so you can find my workouts on Instagram or on my YouTube channel. I also have a free 30 day ab program, um, completely free 10 minutes a day for 30 days. It's a really great way to get motivated and to get some ab workout in. Um, okay. Moving on to nutrition. So first and foremost, I started learning about food, more about food, um, when I moved to New York from Massachusetts. And I was working for a woman who uh, was running an organic baby food company. And so I was around a lot of talk about nutrition and um, ingredients and all that good stuff. Um, she also had an autistic son, has an autistic son. Um, and um, with that, a lot of, um, I, I guess, trying to cure him um, or trying to reverse his uh, disease is by food and nutrition. So he was on a completely gluten-free diet. I mean, there were so many things that they were trying to do to get him better. Um, and so it really sort of piqued my interest. And I started to sort of question you know, what, what it is that we put in our bodies every day and what doctors um, or pediatricians have told us since we were kids, right? Like drink three glasses of milk a day, cow's milk a day. Well, wh why? And because the doctor or pediatrician said, who's not a nutritionist, is telling us this information that we sort of just believe. Um, so I started to sort of question these things. Like, why are we drinking milk? Why are we drinking another species milk, right? milk that's made for a baby cow to grow into a baby calf to grow into a cow and things of that nature. So I've really started to sort of question food um, in general. Um, I also was diagnosed with celiac disease in 2015. Um, so that alleviates a whole lot of really delicious, yummy food that I can no longer eat. Um, the only sort of cure for celiac disease is to just avoid gluten altogether. Um, there's no magic pill and, you know, it's only reversed by food. Um, I have chosen to be meat free since 2012. I was reading a book called You Are What You Eat and my life changed after that uh, for the better. Um, and I wouldn't consider myself a vegan completely. I think real vegans would probably scoff at me and say <laughs> like good effort, but I try to be vegan as much as possible. So I have a list of things that I never eat. Um, and I just want to reiterate that I am no nutritionist. I am no doctor. I'm no, I'm not, this is just what works for me. And the things that I've educated myself on to learn that are not good for my body. Um, so I will never drink soda ever, ever, ever used to drink it back in high school at the stew bop. We'll never do that again. Um, fast food is a complete no, no. Um, if you learn and educate yourself about what goes into those foods. It is severely processed. It's just not good for us. Juice of any kind, I just try to avoid um, high concentration of, of uh, sugars. Um, I don't eat meat, don't eat gluten. Alcohol, I really have sort of stopped drinking alcohol altogether. Um, I'll have it maybe on 
a, a celebratory occasion, um, but I just don't love the way that I feel after I drink. And I just know that because I work in front of a camera for a living, I have to put my best foot forward. And that means, for example, like LeBron James, you know, if he is preparing for his NBA season, he's probably doing everything in his power to make his body perform at the highest level. So I'm essentially doing the same thing. Um, I'm not drinking alcohol. You can see it. I can, I get, you know, a little bit puffy. Um, I get lethargic. I just, it's not good for me. I don't like it. Um, and no smoking at all. Um, moving on to why learning about food is so important. Um, I'm not going to sit here and spend the next hour talking to you guys, talking to you guys about why I think dairy is bad for us. Um, I would like to encourage you guys all to do that. Um, sort of learning and education on your own bit. I will add some resources at, at the end of this um, presentation for you guys to look into it. But I will say though, that our health is in our own hands. It's not in a doctor's hands. It's not in anybody else's hands, but our own. Um, and we have the ability to create as healthy a lifestyle as we want or not want. Um, information and education about food is the most powerful thing, um, I'm sorry, most powerful way to advocate for our bodies. Food affects our health, plain and simple. Um, if you have acne, if you have headaches, if you have heartburn, we should be thinking about not what pill we can take to cure it, but what's the underlying issue there? What's causing it? What's creating it? Uh, food is our fuel, just like working out is. Um, depending on what we eat, it can create energy for ourselves. Uh, without the right fuel, uh, our bodies aren't going to work effectively, which will then cause disease. People feel the best when provided the right food. So, <clears throat> moving on. Um, okay. Um, I would actually like to ask you guys also, if you could drop another sort of, um, uh, emoji or what, what have you, um, in the chat box, I'm curious to know who still drinks cow, cow's milk. Go ahead and drop a little emoji, uh, in that chat box. <clears throat> so. Um, I also want to just preface all of this by saying that you may not agree with anything that I'm saying. You may agree with some of what I'm saying, um, but I would just love to get you guys to think, okay? So continuing on, when you know the truth about food, you can make better decisions. So the education that I've taught myself, that I've learned from whether it be Googling, watching documentaries, reading books about food, how it's processed, what it does to our bodies, I have made better decisions um, for my body because I, I have been educated about it. Um, and that's, that's, on, that's our responsibility is for us to educate ourselves. The right foods will give our body favorable conditions to thrive. Diseases such as cancer or heart disease are not the cause of being human, but rather a result of poor food choices. Again, you may not agree with me. I just, I encourage you to do your research. Um, food is medicine and it can prevent chronic illnesses. It has been shown that being put on a plant-based diet can reverse heart disease and diabetes, et cetera. Again, this is all research-based and it's kind of funny that I added this photo here because <laughs> this was from a photo shoot that I had uh, for this clothing brand and all the girls were eating everything off of the plates and I just sat there and pretended to nibble. So I couldn't eat that croissant or that cheese or drink that OJ. Meredith, uh, I have a question from the audience here. Uh, what, is, what is your take on supplements? I think supplements are, are good. Um, again, I'm not a professional, so I don't want to tell you what to take, but I will refer you to Dr. Uh, Christian Gonzalez, who talks about um, the, the proper um, ones to take, the brands to take, all of that good stuff. <clears throat> There's a lot more that goes into it and the science that I don't totally understand, but I, um, I think Christian Gonzalez, Dr. Christian Gonzalez is a great, great, great um, resource and I will add his information um, at the end. Great, thanks. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> so to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what I eat, 
I've sort of created a food diary. So you can just get an example of all the delicious things that I can eat. Um, so for breakfast, um, an example would be dairy-free yogurt, plain with no sugar. So none of the, you know, peach or blueberry or strawberry, those are filled with sugar. So I stick with the unflavored plain kind, usually adding uh, raspberries or gluten-free granola ends up um, making it a little bit sweeter. So it's not all that bad. Um, gluten-free avocado toast or gluten-free oatmeal with fresh berries. Um, I use just egg as, as an egg substitute. It's, um, it's a brand of, um, uh, that you can find in Whole Foods. I think you can find it in Big Y and Stop and Shop. I'm not totally sure about that, but it's a great uh, egg substitute. Um, and I saute some veggies with gluten-free toast. Um, I do drink decaf coffee. I don't add any extra caffeine because this is my personality all the time and I don't need the extra caffeine to give me that jolt or boost throughout the day. I tend to have really high energy anyways. Um, I do add oat milk and sometimes I drink green tea and Another reminder for you guys to go educate yourselves about green tea. It is really good for you. Um, and then sometimes I'll have a fruit smoothie, uh, whether that be with a banana, almond butter, or oat milk. And then for lunch, I um, love my sandwiches on gluten-free toast. So I'll do like a veggie sandwich with carrots, peppers, avocado, lettuce, tomato, and cabbage with pesto and hummus. It's delicious. Um, that also reminds me that the best way to sort of figure out if you're eating all of the foods you're, you're supposed to, or that are best for you is by following the color chart. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. So that sandwich pretty much has all of the colors that are needed. Um, salads. I love, love, love salads. Um, I love adding warm quinoa to my salads and a warm sweet potato. Uh, cherry tomatoes, avocado, EVOO, and balsamic vinegar. And then I also sometimes have an apple and peanut butter, depending on if I'm hungry or not. Moving on to dinner. There's mom. <laughs> hey, mom. Okay, uh, dinner. Sometimes I do like a tofu stir fry with brown rice. I encourage you all to start swapping out your white rice with brown rice. White rice has nothing good for you. It's like nothing, you're eating nothing. Um, brown rice does. So that's a small change you guys can make. Um, I'll have a salad, I'll have eggplant, I'll do a veggie burger, um, sweet potato, spaghetti squash, gluten-free pasta with veggies, soup, I'll do like a lentil or veggie chili. And then for dessert, because I do like my I do like something sweet after a hearty dinner. I'll do, you know, one piece of vegan dark chocolate and it satisfies that craving. So here I've added resources. So uh, Dr. Christian Gonzalez, he is a guru. He is so smart. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background about him, he uh, grew up in New York City, moved to New Jersey, um, wanted to be a dentist, but then his mom actually was diagnosed with breast cancer and died. And so he decided to um, go into that sort of world. And um, he has this sort of um, thought that instead of waiting to be diagnosed with a disease and then treating it, um, we should be trying to prevent it, right? So are we eating the proper foods to prevent breast cancer is essentially, in a nutshell, <laughs> without all of the big terminology, um, is what he is all about. Um, he has a podcast called Heal Thyself Podcast. It is incredible. Um, I'm planning on sending my mom one about prostate cancer um, and how essentially everybody who has prostate cancer should be on a dairy-free diet because, um, because, let me find my notes, um, contributes to the growth of it and the progression of it. Um, again, this is all research-based. Um, so these are really great resources. Uh, Change for Good um, is a great resource as well. The documentaries that I found to be super helpful, uh, two of them, one is called What the Health, it's on Netflix, and Game Changers, which is actually, it's all vegan-based and they're all professional athletes who are vegan. And I think a preconceived notion of what people think veganism is, is that you'll lose weight, you won't be strong, but 
I, those things are not true um, at all. So I would love to encourage you to watch Game Changers. It's fascinating and inspiring. And then if you're looking for recipes, Plateful Health is down there at the bottom. So we are going to talk about self-care practices. I'm just gonna check the time to make sure that I'm not running over. Okay, we're good on time. Um, all right, so self-care practices. Let's talk about some of the things that we can do. So moving our body and eating well are the two number one ways to take care of ourselves. Um, getting sun is also super important. And I know that I live in the New England Northeast area and it's freezing out here. Um, but I will say that even bundling up and getting out for your morning walk or afternoon walk in the sun is super helpful. Um, therapy. Let's talk about therapy for a second and the stigma around therapy. Um, I think everybody should be in therapy. And I think um, it is super important for, uh, for us um, and as a society, right, for people to be in therapy. Um, so um, moving on, drinking lots of water. So I have water with me constantly. I will not leave the house without a reusable uh, water bottle. It's really important for us to drink as much water as possible. And especially if that's the only thing that we're drinking, um, we need to be drinking lots of it. Um, spending time alone, I think, is something that uh, maybe people who, who have a significant other or husband or wife or girlfriend, boyfriend living together, I think spending time alone is really important for us. Um, reading books, lighting candles, which I love. It just sort of brings me to a whole other mood. Um, praying um, is a great way to practice self-care or meditate, depending on, you know, what your beliefs are. I think meditating is, is hard for me personally. I've tried to do it. Um, but I think just sort of, you know, being alone and sort of alleviating all these extra thoughts that we have about all these crazy things that are happening in our world. So it's just sort of sitting with ourselves and being, you know, quiet and at peace is really helpful. Getting dressed, I know. I mean, nowadays, getting dressed actually is a form of self-care, uh, just because we're spending a lot more time at home um, and not out as much because of COVID. Um, doing our hair and makeup really helps sort of boost our confidence and our, and our energy and our mood. Uh, getting off electronics. Um, I have started to put my phone away an hour before bed and I leave it in the kitchen um, now when I sleep. So that's just a small sort of self-care thing that I'm trying to do. Um, it just deters me from scrolling on my phone before bed at night and scrolling on my phone the moment I wake up or scrolling on my phone when I wake up at three o'clock in the morning for some strange reason. Um, I said putting away our phone one hour, putting away our phone for one hour before bed, um, reaching out to friends or don't, um, you know, a friend reached out to me the other day and I didn't get back to them until the following day, just because I wasn't in the mood to talk. But I think also, you know, staying connected to people during this time of sort of self isolation is really important as well. Um, so do what's best for you, but keep in mind that it's good to stay in contact with people. Take a bath if you have a bathtub. Oof, you guys are lucky if you have one. Um, get close to nature. I think that's really important. Um, sleep eight hours, listen to music, and take a drive. Get in your car and drive. Sometimes that's all that helps me. I tend to be in my apartment a lot of the time, and so sometimes I just get into my car and just drive, and it, it helps. Um, and skincare. So whether that be, you know, um, doing a mask or exfoliating, I think taking care of our skin is a really great way to practice self-care. Okay. So we have a little bit of time left. Um, I do want to open this up for questions, um, a Q and A, but let me just quickly run through some of these. So, um, I don't like New Year's resolutions. I think that they are really hard to keep. I think they're not really attainable. And I think that a lot of us do like go big or go home, right? So I think for me, um, there are body positive goals that we can set at the beginning of the year, our intentions. And I just wanna run through some of them with you because I think that this is a great way to sort of set self-care goals throughout the entire year. Again, you guys will have this if you want to refer back to, print this out, 
whatever, follow them on a daily basis. Um, I think that they are really helpful. So um, I'll quickly run through them and then we'll do a QA. and So I will be kinder and more compassionate to my body. This will lead to a healthier and happier life. After all, my body carries me through this tiny thing we call life. It deserves all of my love and care. I will listen to my body more. I will hear it when it screams, I need rest or I need more love. Rest when it tells you to rest. That is something that is very hard to do, I know, but force yourself to do it. I will use my mental health days when I need them. If you work a nine to five, you have mental health days and they're there for a reason. So I encourage you to use them. And that's actually a good reminder for me because I don't work a nine to five, I work for myself. Sometimes I need to take a mental health day and it is challenging um, because I'm a, I'm a worker bee, um, but it's really important for us to listen to that. Um, I will compliment myself and others. I will not fake it. And I will only say things I actually believe. I will accept my flaws. I will talk about them more to normalize them and I will learn to love them. I will get rid of all negative people in my life. I will only surround myself with people who practice self-love. I will speak up when I hear someone body shaming and hold them accountable for their cruel words. I will do my part to spread awareness. This should also be for men as well. We need them as allies. If you hear somebody who is body shaming, please speak up. I will wear clothes that I feel amazing in regardless of what society thinks is appropriate, acceptable, excuse me. I will make care, I will make self-care a priority and not an option. I will get massages more frequently. This is after COVID is over. Um, set time aside to sit quietly in silence or read pleasurably. I will exercise because it's good for me and not because I want to fit into a smaller pair of jeans. Instead of aiming for a smaller or perfect weight, I will aim for a healthy weight. I will remind myself why exercising is so good for me. I will work out only doing something that I enjoy. If I love it, I won't dread doing it. I will run only if I like to run and I will go to the gym only if I like to go to the gym. I promise to get moving even if it means just going for a walk. And if I miss two weeks of movement, I won't let it spiral into more weeks and months. I will not be too hard on myself and I will work out when I can. I will give myself grace. And the last few, I will stop saying no to things because of my weight. I will remind myself that real life is happening right now. I will stop waiting to be at a better place with my body to do all the things that I love. I will not weigh myself. The scale does not determine my health or happiness. Let me read that again. The scale does not determine my health or happiness. And as you guys could see, I never talked about weight loss and why fitness is good. If weight loss is on your, on your, you know, to-do list, that's fantastic. But my community that I'm building, it's not about weight or it's not about weight loss. It's about taking care of our bodies. Um, do, do, do. Let's see. All right. I will work on ridding the stigma associated with the number the scale gives me. I will remind myself that most people don't have a healthy relationship with it. Heck, maybe I'll even throw it out. So I encourage you to stop using your scale. I will purge my closet of things that don't fit my current body. I will dress my body for now. I will donate or sell things, anything that no longer fits. And I will give myself a boost of confidence when I highlight my favorite part of my body. I will stop buying clothing that do not highlight this part of my body. I will not sit, I'm sorry, I will not wait. I will start now. And that, you guys, sums up my presentation for you. Um, here is a list of further reading of all of the articles that I've written over the last, I don't know, three, four, five years, um, all about body positivity, why working out is good, what yoga did to my body, um, et cetera, et cetera. And all the ways that we can connect. So I have my email address here if you want to connect, um, my YouTube channel where you can find out all of my uh, workouts. And I also do style sessions, which is really fun. Um, my Instagram is also connected here, my website where you'll find all of those articles and my Facebook, um, which is sort of a community in itself. I love the Facebook community. Um, lots of great women there. So 
Let me um, stop sharing my screen. Oh, hello. Now I can see everybody. Um, okay, so I'm going to remove the spotlight. Okay. And then everybody can, um, if you have a question, um, just feel free to ask Meredith. Uh, I'm going to start with one, though. Short of taking you and having you live with me to keep me disciplined. <laughs> Because that's what I need. Um, how would you say, how would you recommend somebody to stay disciplined um, until the benefits of this kind of lifestyle kick in? Yeah, that's, it's hard. It is. I mean, even for me, it's hard. Um, there are days when I don't want to work out, right? And there are days when I don't want to eat as well as I eat, right? There are days when I want to just go down the street and have a pizza with cheese on it. Um, but I just sort of, I think I'm at a place now where because I've changed my lifestyle, that becomes habit. And, and it takes a while to get there. And you'll probably struggle a little bit, but it's possible to get into that place where it is a lifestyle change. So you're no longer, you know, ordering things with a load of cheese on it, you're you're ordering a salad instead, or, you know, fruits and veggies and beans and all these things that are so much better for us. And I think just constantly reminding ourselves that those things are the best for us is, is, is the way to sort of work into the lifestyle changes. It's not going to happen overnight. It's, it's still, I mean, I can't even consider myself a vegan. My mom, you know, I was home for the holidays and I had a piece of salmon. Um, but I think small steps is really the way to go. And, um, a friend of mine who actually went to Williston, Brittany Sochard and I, um, she's vegan as well. And so we kind of, you know, share recipes or, or things that we found at Trader Joe's or things of that nature. And she sent something to me one day where she saw a quote saying like, if you can just be vegan as possible. And, 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 and it's not putting pressure on us. And I think that's really important is to not, you know, it's not, it's, it's to not put the pressure on us because I think that's what happens. Like when we put pressure on ourselves, that's what happens when people fall off the wagon. Um, it's because we put so much pressure. So if we just say, all right, let me just make, make it lighthearted. Just, I'm going to just make better decisions. And that also goes to, you know, we're in control, right? So we're not going to go to the grocery store. We're not going to buy Cheetos and soda and, you know, processed X, Y, and Z you can control what you have in your house, right? So next time you go to the grocery store, a small step would be just, just buy things that are good for you. Perfect. Good. <laughs> <laughs> such a challenge, such a challenge. It is, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Does anybody else have any questions for Meredith? No. Meredith, I know you said no soda, but what's your take on seltzer water? Um, so for me personally, um, I don't drink it because I think, so I, when I run, I was having some really severe sort of stomach cramps, um, after I was running. And I think that might've been caused to the carbonation. Um, so I, I don't think that it works. I used to love it and ugh, I loved self serve water just because I love the fizziness. Um, but so I, that I can only give you my personal take on it. It doesn't work for me just because it doesn't, it upsets my stomach when I run. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, by the way. Oh my gosh. So good to see you. Mom, you've got to have a question, right? <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> I was happy to see that you qualified that picture with a glass of orange juice in your <laughs> hand and a croissant in front of you, because yeah. if you hadn't, I would have called you on it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, work is work and uh, I'm glad all the other models got to enjoy the food, but not for me. <laughs> do, you have a question. Um, do you have a specific brand on veggie burgers that you recommend? Yes. I wish I could go grab it. Um, I think it's Dr. Prager's, I believe. And I love the heirloom mushroom one the best. It is so good. Perfect. All right. Well, if we don't have any other questions, oh, I think Helen, did, Helen, yeah, Helen, Helen a great question about, um, do you have a preference of the non-dairy milk? You know, it's soy milk or almond milk, oat milk. Yeah. So I, I was going to say wherever you are, looks beautiful, but is that just a background? <laughs> 
Oh, not real. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so again, personal preference is based on taste. Um, I think all of the alternatives, I think almond milk is good because it's made from almonds. Um, same thing as oat milk um, and soy milk. I drink soy milk as well. Um, I like the taste of oat milk the best. Um, and I use that in my decaf coffee or my tea because it has a little bit of a thicker sort of creamier, kind of gives you the impression that you're drinking like a half and half or something like that. So I tend to like um, oat milk the best. Um, the brands specifically that are best for you, if you go back into Christian Gonzalez, um, he does, he has so just an array, a, a wealth of information. I, I really encourage you guys to go check him out. Um, but he breaks down brands for everything, toothpaste, uh, oat milk, uh, yogurt, dairy-free yogurt, cheese, um, vitamins, all of these supplements. Um, and he tells you what he thinks the best brands are. So um, oat milk for me personally, and then I will refer you back to, to his work and uh, to find the brand that works best for you. Great, great. Well, this has certainly been life-changing for me, honestly. <laughs> Learn so there's, much. So, there's so much more I want to talk about in terms of disease and dairy and there, there's just so much information out there that we can be educated nobody's going to teach us this right we have to do it on our own right. um, so I really 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 uh, encourage you guys all to sort of do the work on your own and do what's best for you um, what is works for me and what is best for me may not work for you, um, and that's okay. Um, but at least we have you guys thinking about making better choices, so. I must say as her mother that she continues to influence me in my choices, particularly when it comes to self-care and the clothes that I now choose to wear. Mm -hmm. uh, my profession always kept me in sweatpants and I now think twice when I put my clothes on, well, what would Meredith think? So uh, <laughs> she continues to, to even influence her her mother as she ages. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Yeah, and I think I've seen a huge sort of um, shift, right, in in you and your personality and your energy because you're taking more time. I mean, you had three kids. I can't even imagine what that was like and working a crazy full time job. <laughs> um, at, but you know, you you as a mother put all of your energy and effort into raising your children. Um, and now that we're sort of like, you know, out of the nest, you have more time to sort of spend on yourself, which I think is just fantastic. I wish you would have done a long time ago, but nevertheless, we're here and and it's good. So never too late. Never too late to start. <laughs> exactly. All right, great. Well, thank you so much, Meredith. This was amazing. Uh, we can also catch up with Meredith in the next two weeks. Next week, we actually changed the date from Wednesday to Tuesday so people can view the inauguration. Um, so Tuesday, 12 o'clock, we have a closet clean out with Meredith. And then the following week, we have uh, our own personal styling session with Meredith. So great. lots more to come with Meredith. Excited and thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you guys all so much for being here. It means a lot. Thank you for your support. And hopefully uh, you learned something today or were inspired either way. <laughs> Absolutely inspiring. Good. All right, everybody. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Bye.